So this next little story that I'm going to tell you is a little bit sad. You see here is a cute little bug called an aphid. Here is a nice drawing of an aphid. And an aphid likes to eat. And the way it eats is it actually has this little thing that comes out of its face called a stylet. And uh, aphids are pretty clever. And the way that they feed is the stylet actually penetrates down into the actual phloem tissue. And because of the high hydrostatic pressure in the phloem tissue, a lot of the stuff starts flowing towards the actual aphid. So from a high hydrostatic pressure area to a low hydrostatic pressure area, uh, that's how they actually get to feed. So the reason why this story is sad is because we've taken advantage of this particular system here. And uh, this can introduce all kinds of questions about ethics in science, but we need to learn about how we actually use this stuff. So sad thing that happens is we cut the stylet off of this poor little aphid and this stylet gets stuck here. And as a result, uh, phloem fluid will actually continue to pour out of this actual thing and you can actually uh, measure it. It's like a little straw. We're taking advantage of the bug's ability to penetrate deep into the phloem tissue. So you can take this one step further and one of the ways to do that is if you actually introduce the plant to some radioactively labeled carbon dioxide which can be detected, you can actually expect a plant to be able to do photosynthesis with radioactive carbon dioxide. And as you know, carbon dioxide is one of the main raw products that's used for photosynthesis. So when the products of photosynthesis are made, which are basically glucose, which can turn into other more complex uh, organic disaccharides and polysaccharides, that will actually contain the radioactive carbon. So the basic idea here is that once we introduce the radioactively labeled carbon dioxide and then allow photosynthesis to happen, you can actually have little stylets set up at different lengths across a particular stem and you can actually time how long it takes for the radioactivity to be detected. By doing that, you can actually figure out the rate of phloem transport. So scientists want to figure out, you know, how quickly does a plant actually do photosynthesis and how long does it take for the phloem to actually transport this stuff? Like what's the rate of transport? So basically scientists have been able to use a particular system of a given organism, in this case the aphid, to be able to calculate phloem transport rates to see how long it takes for sap from a given area to travel a particular distance. Pretty clever stuff.